voyage through the uh, kind of simple landmark equation forms of polar. Um, so we talked about limassons last time. Um, limassons are of the form r equals a plus or minus uh, b sine or cosine of theta. But polar uh, equa polar coordinates are also really good for graphing types of conics. Okay. Now conics, when we did them in Cartesian coordinates, conics are can be a little bit messy. There's a lot of different forms of equations to memorize, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. In polar coordinates, conics are actually a lot nicer. Uh, so let's say that I have, uh, we'll say just an ellipse this time. Okay. So I'm going to have an ellipse. Uh, we'll say the focus is at the pole. We have a directrix over here. Uh, and then I'll draw my ellipse. This is going to be such a bad ellipse. All right, that's my ellipse. Now, before I keep going, I want to make it very clear. We're going to use the focus directrix property for the, to, to do this derivation that I'm going to set up. When we do this, we are not using any really properties of the ellipse. This is general for uh, ellipses, parabolas, and hyperbolas. Okay, so the equation that we're going to get after I do this derivation is awesome because there's only one equation for all three kinds of conics, uh, which is wonderful for you guys because it means you don't have to memorize all these different equations, x squared over a squared minus b x and y squared over b squared versus plus versus, you know, the form of the parabola and all these different things. So there's going to be one nice equation for all the conics. Circles are different, but circles are also easier. So we're going to call the distance from the directrix to the focus p. And I want to make it clear, this p is not the same as the p in the parabola uh, standard form. I know that's annoying. I didn't make it up. That stinks. Sorry. So uh, that's, we're going to call that p. I'm going to pick an arbitrary point r theta. Uh, and I know now it's going to look like I'm picking like the end point of the minor axis, but it's not. It's an arbitrary point. It's r theta. Okay, now the distance from uh, r theta to the directrix is d1, and the distance to the focus is d2. Um, so I can use my focus directrix property of d2 equals ed1, and I know d2 is equal to r, because my point is r theta, right? So this has to be equal to r. And d1, what's that going to be? Well, d1, if I look at d1, it's going to be equal to p, that's the distance to the focus, because it's the distance to uh, the theta equals pi over 2 line. But then I have to add this tiny segment right here, right? And what is this? Well, I know that's r. I know this is a triangle at right angle. This is theta. So this right here is going to be r cos theta, OK? So I'm going to have p plus r cos theta. So then I get to substitute this in. So I get r equals e times p plus r cos theta. And then I'm going to you know, solve this for r. So I'm going to distribute the e. I'm going to subtract this from both sides. I'm going to factor out the r. I'm going to divide it out. When we do all of this algebra, do you want me to do it out? I'll do it out. OK. If you're not interested, just skip forward like a little bit. So we get ep uh, plus e r cos theta. And then I'm going to subtract this. So I have r minus e r cos theta equals ep. And then I'm going to factor out the r, so I get r times 1 minus e cos theta equals ep. Then I divide both sides by this term, and I get that r is equal to ep divided by 1 minus e cos theta. Now remember, e is equal to eccentricity. So what we have here is awesome. What we have here is a general equation for ellipses, for parabolas, and for hyperbolas, that only depends on the distance between the focus and the directrix and the eccentricity, okay? However, one caveat. This is explicitly, solely, for conics that have their focus at the pole, okay? That's really important. This doesn't work for ellipses that do not have their focus at the pole. But this is a really nice equation when the focus does happen to be at the pole, okay? So that's a general equation for conics with the focus at the pole. Next, let's look at circles, because this does not hit circles. So for circles, I'm going to draw something a little different. I'm going to say, let's say what happens, we did a circle that's centered at the origin, at the pole. Um, that's just r equals radius of the circle. 
What if instead I have a circle that passes through the pole like that? I know it's a bad circle. So let's say to figure this out, I'm gonna have an arbitrary point R theta. Let's say that my circle has a diameter of K. And then if I draw this angle here, I know this has to be a right angle because geometry. So this is R, that's theta. This is a right triangle. Cosine of theta is equal to R over K, which means that R is equal to K cos theta. And this is, uh, again, K is the diameter of the circle, not the radius, so just be careful with that because we're used to working in radii for circles. So R equals K cos theta, that's the equation of a circle that passes through the pole, okay? So nice, simple equation there. Whereas if we did this in Cartesian, it'd be kind of gross because the center would be right here, so we'd have like x minus, you know, k over 2, all squared, and it just yucky. Yeah, who wants that? So uh, what about a line? If we have a line perpendicular to the polar axis, so I'm going to draw this again. Now we're going to say, let's say I have a line here. What is this going to be? Well, let's say the line is a distance k from the pole. Um, or from the line theta uh, uh, equals pi over 2. I can again draw a triangle and say, well, uh, if I take an arbitrary point, we'll call this r theta again. It's a trend. Uh, then this is going to be r, this is going to be theta. And I, uh, this is a right angle. So I can again do geometry, and this time I can say that the secant of theta is equal to r over k, which means that r is equal to secant, uh, sorry, k, secant theta. Kind of weird that this equation for a line and a circle are, are so similar, just unusual, not what you'd expect coming from, from Cartesian. Um, so that's for if you have a circle passing through the pole, and if you have a line that is some distance k uh, from, from the pole, and it's perpendicular uh, to the polar axis. Okay. So what if instead I want to do any circle in general? So now I'm going to have... Uh, a circle. Oh man, that's a bad circle. Can I do better? Can I do better? Okay, it's a little better. So we're going to say my circle, the center is going to be k alpha. Okay. Um, so that means that it's going to be a distance k from the pole. And let's also pick an arbitrary point r theta, which is going to be a distance of r from the pole. This shouldn't cross through here. I'm just bad at drawing things. So r uh, theta. I mean, I guess depending on where you draw it, it could pass through. It doesn't really matter. So uh, that'll be r theta. And that means that uh, this angle here is alpha. This angle here is theta. And this angle just between these two is therefore going to be theta minus alpha. Okay. And then we'll say the circle has a radius of a. Okay, So what I can do from here is I can actually just use the law of cosines. And if I plug this into the law of cosines, I get a squared equals r squared plus k squared minus 2rk cosine of theta minus alpha. And that is the general equation for a circle that has nothing special about it. So it's not passing through the pole, it's not centered at the pole, none of that stuff. Just general equation of a circle in the polar plane, okay? Well, those are uh, our useful equations for conics, but what happens if we want to rotate them? Now you'll be thrilled to hear that whereas rotation in conic sections uh, in Cartesian was kind of a mess, uh, it's really easy in polar. In polar, all you do is you take theta, if you want to rotate it by alpha, and you just replace it with theta minus alpha to rotate it by alpha. So that means that you get r equals ep over 1 minus cosine of theta minus alpha. Or you get uh, r equals for a circle k cos theta minus alpha. You get r equals k secant for a line secant of theta minus alpha, okay? Uh, and then the same thing, um, yeah. So all the same for all the all three comic sections. Now, we're going to look mostly at the conics equation. So again, that's r equals ep 
over 1 minus cosine of theta. And if we rotate it, it's alpha. So a couple things about this. Let's say I take this. So uh, I don't know. Let's say I have uh, an ellipse. Okay. If I have an ellipse and I rotate it 90 degrees, I get cosine of theta minus 90, which is just sine which means I then get r equals ep over 1 minus sine of theta. For a circle, it's the same thing. I would have r equals k cos theta, but if I rotate that circle 90 degrees, then it becomes r equals k sine theta. Well, what happens if I rotate it? So I'll, I guess I'll draw it for you. So here we have, um, this would be uh, like ellipse like this. This would be circle right there. This one would be, we rotated 90 degrees, so we get a circle there. This one we have now ellipse here. So the focus is at the pole. I did a poor job of showing that, but there you go. Um, and then, what if I rotate it another 90 degrees? Well, then I get minus sine theta minus alpha, and what happens is we get r equals ep over 1 plus cosine theta, right? So then we have this, focus of the pole, ellipse, boom. Uh, r equals negative k cos theta uh, for our circle, and that would be like that, right? So then the last one is going to be r equals ep over 1 plus sine theta, and that means we get this, where it's down. r equals negative k sine theta, we get the uh, circle, so like that. Okay, so that way you can quickly, uh, you know, use this to read off uh, what you expect from each equation. Okay, um, so oh, I'm sorry, I missed the e's in all of these. These should all have an e over here. My mistake. Yeah, definitely gotta have those e's there. Otherwise, it would always be a problem if it was always just one. Um, so the cosine and the sine tell you whether it's gonna open vertically. Uh, or horizontally, if we're looking at, at this one, right? Circles is you know pretty easy, it just goes around in a circle. Um, but let's take a look at some conics to try to gain a better sense of uh, what this equation looks like for, for different conics, okay? So one thing you might have to remind yourself of is that uh, if E is less than one, it's an ellipse. If E is equal to one, it's a parabola. Uh, and if E is greater than 1, it's a hyperbola. Okay? So if I have, uh, let's say, R equals uh, 3 over 1 plus sine theta, and I want you to sketch, so identify the conic, and then sketch the direction and shape. So we're not looking for any kind of key points here. I just want a general sketch, okay? So I look at this and I say, well, E is equal to one, P is equal to three, okay? E is one, remember, we're not looking at the sign. We're just looking at the kind of the absolute value of the number here because the sign comes from rotating uh, the original thing. So I have a parabola, okay? This is a parabola since E is equal to one. Um, and I'm, I know my parabola is gonna open either up or down because I have a sign. So it's gonna open in a vertical direction. Because it's plus, I'm gonna have a parabola that has its focus at the origin and opens downward. So I'm gonna, it's gonna look like this, okay? Now for a parabola, yeah, you could do more work. You'd say, oh, well, I know the vertex is halfway between the directrix and the, um, oh, sorry, the vertex is halfway between the directrix and the focus, and that's three, so there's gonna be 1.5. You don't have to do any of that. I'm just looking for you to be able to sketch the shape of the conic once you have it, okay? So let's look at another one. Let's say I have now r equals six over uh, three minus two cos theta. Well this, before I can figure out what conic is and get the eccentricity, I have to get this into standard form. So this three needs to go away and become a one. So what I'm gonna do is factor out, I'm gonna have six over three times one minus two thirds uh, cosine theta. Uh, which gives me 2 over 1 minus 2 thirds cosine theta. Okay, so now I look at this and say, ah, this is going to be an ellipse, right? Because I have 2 thirds. So if this is going to be an ellipse, uh, then what I am going to do is 
say, well, I know this is going to be an ellipse that has this major axis along the vertical, uh, horizontal, along the polar axis. So what we do is we know it has a focus at the origin. Okay. And to sketch this, pretend like it's any other conic, it's going to open to the right. Okay, because of this negative sign. So this is where a parabola, we would just do that, right? But because it's an ellipse, we start opening to the right, and then we finish it and turn it into an ellipse. Okay, so most of the ellipse is over to the right. Okay, um, and you know, if we turn this into plus, then I would take this and I would draw it like that instead. Okay, uh, let's look at one more. Let's look at a hyperbola. Um, so hyperbola if we have something like r equals 12 over uh, 2 minus 4 cos theta this would become 6 over 1 minus 2 cos theta and I say ah, I have 2 it's going to be a, a, a hyperbola so here set this up and we say, wait a minute, this is really confusing because hyperbolas, I know, open in both directions. So this says horizontal. So I'm gonna have something like this, but, but where is what? Well, this hyperbola has a focus of the pole, just like everything that is in this form. So there's a focus of the pole here, and then it opens to the right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw my hyperbola like this, okay? And then the other half goes over here. So what we're doing is we're saying, okay, this equation tells us that the half of the hyperbola that has its focus at the pole opens to the right, okay? Opens horizontally to the right because it's the negative sign, okay? So yeah, the other half of the hyperbola opens to the left, but that half does not have its focus at the pole, so we don't care. If I flip the sign and this became plus, then I would end up having this instead, okay? So that's how you sketch polar equations of conics and of lines. Uh, and that's another uh, form that's going to pop up a lot when we're doing conics.